Phil Samara from Black Women TV. Hi, folks. How's it going? All Good, right. Thanks. How are you? Good. Where are you? You know, Sam, over the years, we've seen Nick Fury being the conduit to all these characters that we're introducing. Uh, in, the, in the last few films, and even with this series, we're seeing more of an emotional side to him. Uh, are we still getting the full story of Nick's uh, of Nick, or is there more to be learned that we won't get in this series? Uh, I wish I could tell you the answer to that, you know, because that would mean that I would know that I'm actually going to work in this universe again. I don't know that yet, because <laughs> uh, you know they're changing phases and doing all kinds of things, you know. But you know, glad to have this opportunity to tell this particular uh, Nick Fury story or to give an iteration of Nick that we haven't seen in terms of him not being all-seeing, all-powerful, and having to uh, reinvent himself because he's been away for so long. But having you know a colorful cast of uh, characters around him, that allows that to work in an interesting way for an audience. And you get to meet people that are cool, like Sonya. Hey, <laughs> yes, indeed. Welcome to the Marvel Universe. Thank well, yeah, you. You know? In your first introduction, you know, did you have to come back or go back and watch the previous films, or were you just going by what the script said, and you know, playing his character? I, I always go by just what the script says, because uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'd seen all the films, and uh, I can't, I, I still, I, I would have to really concentrate on which film actually comes where in, which ones you should watch in sequence. It's still really complicated to me, but I've, I've loved them all. I only yesterday found out was it you who said yeah Fox no the was, guy the guy oh, no, told us guy the, yeah, yeah. the guy yeah. told us about who you know the yeah. chronology was an interesting chronology that we neither of us knew about Union Jack was a Foles, Folesworth and so yeah. I went oh my god and then it was a relative yeah so said, ah, that's let's exciting see what <laughs> so I'm finding out all sorts of things as we go it's lovely. As you mentioned, Sam, you know, they always take the character in different places. So you stop reading the comic books because when fans come up to you and start talking about where they think Nick is going to go, you can't even explain to what happened in the comic book because the writer's always changing your background, right? A bit. But, you know, um, well, I mean, come on, you had to go way back. You know, see, Nick Fury was a white dude. <laughs> you know, and all of a sudden, I go in a comic book store one day, and he's not white anymore. He's me. It's like, oh, okay, all right, cool. So now we're starting a whole new chronology for who he is, where he came from, and you know how he responds to things. You know, now he's we no get longer to see David. Times. He's no longer Both David times. Hasselhoff. He's me. <laughs> <laughs> and how is it when you can go back and forth, uh, look younger with the two eye sets, you know, as opposed to you know what we always know with the eye patch? <laughs> oh, really? Did that change? Do I look younger with that? I, I think I look older now with two, with, with two eyes. <laughs> and what more can you say about Sonya? Obviously, I believe she's a new character, or, or you know, there's not so much written about her. But is there anything you can mention here before anybody gets to see it? Um, well, just that she and Fury are old friends. That's what we learn when we first meet them, um, and they're clearly old friends who who trust each other, uh, respect each other's work. Um, but then they're still you're still finding out how much they trust each other. Um, and that I think they've really got each other's back. Uh, mm. Although she is a bit cruel when he, she first meets him and goes, like, you're not ready for this, <laughs> you're past your prime. I think that's part of, you know, how they how they talk to each other. Yeah. You know? She talks to him that way. And They're painfully honest. Yeah. She think. compares him to Paul Robeson of all people. <laughs> yeah, like, it was in the script. And wishing it was Paul Robeson <laughs> and not me. It's like, yeah. But I do have you a know, wonderful rendition of Old Man Do you? I can't wait to hear it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> is it different for you, Sam? Obviously, I saw you in the last days of Polly Gray, but when you're doing a Marvel series as opposed to one film, is the is the direction of production different because it's, you're now doing a series playing this kind of character for a period of time as opposed to just one film almost every six months to a year? Um, well, fortunately for us, uh, we had a consistency of uh, how to tell the story because we have one director for all six episodes. Uh, and that's a daunting task for anybody, you know, to try and carry that out and then go in and edit it and put it together. But uh, having, having, having Ali do them all was a great resource for us all. Yeah. And uh, the, the biggest difficulty sometimes becomes when you do a series like this and then they watch it and they go, okay, we got to do it again. And they call you back. 
And then you come back and you go, okay, fine, let me do it again. And you do some more stuff, and then they look at it again and go, oh, we got to call you back again. <laughs> and the next time, you know, maybe maybe those other people are there and maybe they're not. You know, so there's that part. But fortunately, every time I had to do something with Olivia, she showed up. Uh-huh. You know, I didn't have to do it with some <laughs> fake person and go, this is not right because – Oh, that's gonna, difficult. Yeah, it's not cool. Well, that's what veterans are for. I appreciate you guys talking right. to me. Uh, I appreciate the series, what I've seen so far. Can't wait to look forward to seeing the others. Thank Take you. care of yourself. All, All right, man. Bye bye. Wilson Morales from Black from TV. Hey, Kingsley, how's it going? Yeah, man, good. We've met before. Yes, we have. Yeah, you we know, have. a couple of times. And uh, obviously, you know, your roles are only getting bigger and bigger. So, congrats on this role. Thank and, you. And uh, how did it come about for you? Did you audition or did it come out for you? It came, the offer came straight after One Night in Miami came out. So probably, okay. probably not long after we spoke. <clears throat> now we know this is not what fans know so much probably about the character or the series or some other characters. How would you best describe the character you're playing? And did you want to add more anything to it outside of the script? Yeah, a lot. I thought it was important to, to, uh, to, to try and, and and build in as much as possible someone who who we meet at the start of the the film or the the series it was important to me that we meet Gravik at a point where he he doesn't trust anyone anymore and that he he, he feels no love towards anyone or anything um, and that his his whole existence within this is about creating chaos and inflicting pain um, is there any humanity in him? You know, yeah. are we supposed to side with him to some extent, or is he just pure, you know, on the opposite side, one note? Well, I think he's got, he's, I don't know if he's one note. I hope he's not one note. But you definitely get to understand why he's behaving in the way that he does. I think, I think that his, the, the vun, that if, if there is vulnerability, it comes out in very specific moments that you'll get to understand as the episodes go on. But just in terms of his, his personal feelings in in terms of his relationship towards Nick and Talos, it's uh, it's reached the point of what to me felt like no return. He's a guy who, he's a guy who, um, who's completely desensitized to violence. When you have Sam in here as well as Ben Mendelsohn, for you, did you watch the films as they came out, or did you have to go back and watch, you know, whether it's Captain Marvel or the previous films that Sam was wearing? The Sam was in. Yeah, I caught up with a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. You know, so just to get a, a, a long, just to get an idea as to the sense of character you're playing, you know, and to understand Sam's uh, uh, Nick's dynamic, you know, his his way of life. Yeah, to understand the world. Yeah, the just to understand Marvel and the universe, and yeah, and yeah, you're right. And Nick's who Nick was, and uh, and Talos, and what they represent in the in the sh- in the huh. in the world. And then just. I was working with this cast, you know, obviously, you know, you've got folks like Olivia and Sam and Don, and you don't have scenes with everybody, but it's such a, a tremendous cast of people that's in this movie. You know, how was it like, you know, meeting some of these people? Well, meeting them was, I met some of them yesterday for the first time. Um, but yeah, it was a great, it was a great group of actors and uh, yeah, really, really good company. Mm-hmm. And then with the projects you've done so far, what goes and you said this was offered to you. What goes to saying yes? Obviously, the lore of was it Marvel or Sam or anything else. What goes into saying yes to the projects you take? Just character and script. Script then character. Story then character. Story and char- character and story. Sort of that. Those are the two most important things. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, you got uh, you got the Bob Marley film coming out. You know, what are you expecting down the road? Hopefully. What are we expecting? What sorry? And playing Bob Marley. What can you expect? Yeah, what are we going to get that's not part of Wikipedia? <laughs> uh, it's a good question. Hopefully there's some, some, some stuff uh, aside of Bob that we, we don't, you know, that his, his fans don't necessarily know. And a, a huge support from the family that brought lots of, uh, like, beauty and... and um, Mm-hmm. And then, as we saw in the series, obviously you have uh, the characters that you're playing has a relationship, has a you know a friendship with Amelia. How, how was working with her 
in establishing a friendship so that we, the, the audience, can see that there's a friendship there that may go sideways or not. I don't know if there's a friendship there in the characters. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's what... Um, I don't think that's what I saw. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> well, maybe, definitely a pleasure to seeing you in this role. Sure. Obviously, you've got a lot going on for you. I'm sure we'll talk down the road. So keep it up. We're here to support. Take care. Wherever you're at, stay safe. Thank you, too. Tomorrow, I'll from Black TV. Hello, Ali. How's it going? How are you, Wilson? It's nice to meet you. So when you're tasked with directing this series, you know, how much do you have to do in terms of a deep dive, and whether it be the, the previous films or comic books, in order to get some of these characters right so, so that the fans are pleased? Um, well, it's a really good question. Uh, the first day I was hired to work on this series, the thing they told me was don't read the comic books. They have nothing to <laughs> do with this series. Um, this series was created by Kyle Bradstreet, who wrote a great set of scripts that uh, are about... Uh, less about the MCU and more about issues of or themes of tr mis distrust and paranoia and suspicion. Uh, the the catalyst into this story is a man, not a superhero, Nick Fury, who comes down to Earth and puts his boots on the ground and tries to get his footing once again despite circumstances that have changed him or affected him. And so my mind it, it, within those themes and within that character goes more to film noir than it does to the canon of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, and we studied films like uh, The Third Man, uh, Conversation, the Paranoia Trilogy of Clute and the Parallax View and All the President's Men. And I think no matter what you do to this series, which is intended to be darker and slightly more mature, no matter what you do, it will always live as a contribution to the Marvel Cinematic Universe because it's about Nick Fury, it's about the Skrulls, it's about things that we understand, but it takes those things that we know and love and expands on them a little bit. Knowing that Marvel has a good way of continuing storylines with characters and so forth, and, you know, were you working with Kyle and knowing, as you just mentioned, we, we have Nick Fury, we have the Skrulls, you've got the Marvels coming out later this year, you know, so that way... There's a time frame where is, you know, can this be seen afterwards or you can't because you know there's going to be more stuff that, uh, that Marvel does with some of these characters? I think it's a really good question again, and I, I, I don't want to disappoint you, but that's a question for Kevin Feige. I, okay. <laughs> my job is to look in, in the confines of these six episodes and to make it emotionally truthful, thrilling for audiences its application outside the MCU, I mean, the, into the larger MCU, is I know it's being addressed by people far above my pay grade. My job is to make sure that you feel emotional truth at the end of every scene within those six episodes. Knowing that uh, Sam and Ben have worked together, um, you know, do you walk in there knowing that they already have a rapport with these characters, you know? So is it an easy task knowing, like, with some of these actors, the rapport is already there, and all you have to do is say, go? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think at the end of the day, my job is not to tell people what to do, but to create an environment in which they can do what they do to its fullest. And mm -hmm. um, that's easy for me, uh, whether characters have been played by those actors for decades or it's a brand new experience for them. It's really just creating an environment for them to explore and discover. Um, I think you do have an amazing electricity between Sam and Ben because they've worked together a lot. You also have an amazing electricity between Sam and Olivia Coleman because they want to work together even though they never have. You have an amazing electricity between Don Cheadle and Samuel L. Jackson because they've been friends for years and always wanted to work together but never had the chance to do it. So my job was thrilling and exciting and had kind of a fanboy element to it, but also at the end of the day, my job is just to make that environment for actors to play. Job well done. I was intrigued from what I've seen so far. I want to see the rest, obviously, you know, but that's a good thing about this series that we can see it weekly as opposed to all at once. So keep it going. I'm sure we'll talk down the road on your next project. Enjoy. Take Have a care. great day.